A good horror remake is a lot like a hot girl who isn't crazy. They're basically... Uh, getting more common? What? My dating life is improving and EA is releasing single-player games? These truly are the end times. The original Dead Space is an all-time classic. I reviewed it back in 2018. Go watch that video after this one. And I also have a playthrough series of Dead Space remake on my second channel. So check that out if you're interested. Dead Space perfected third-person horror, a genre made extremely popular by a little-known obscure gem barely anybody played. A little rough, don't you think? It took all the best parts of RE4's combat and threw it into space, which is why I loved it. The game is a prime example of how to create atmosphere in a video game, and it was ripe for a remake. For all intents and purposes, the Dead Space franchise was dead, lost in space somewhere. Nobody believed this more than EA, as they canceled a sequel, Dead Space 4, and said the third installment needed to sell 5 million copies if the franchise were to continue. It did not sell 5 million copies. EA then shut down the developers of Dead Space, Visceral Studios, because they didn't see a future for single-player games. And six years later, I think this prediction was maybe a little off. So after 2017, any hope that EA would fund and publish a new Dead Space was deader than shit. About as likely as Nicole still being alive. We all accepted this fact and moved on. So imagine my shock when I saw this. And yet, some big questions remain. Did Motive Studios create an authentic remake of Dead Space? What, if anything, did they screw up? Will this revive the franchise? And is the Dead Space remake worthy of being called a masterpiece? Well, let's cut off some limbs, make us whole again, and return the marker straight into this. Dead Space is my ideal kind of remake. One that doesn't pretend the original was perfect and didn't have flaws. A remake that keeps all the best parts, improves the worst, and creates new experiences that even seasoned fans will be surprised by. I was thrilled to see this wasn't just a shot-for-shot -shot remake of something I'd beaten six times already. All the iconic areas you remember have been kept mostly the same, and places that weren't utilized as much or were more mysterious have been greatly expanded upon. So rather than rehash all the points I made in my 2018 review, I figured we should focus on the major differences between the two versions to see what has improved and what hasn't. Well, the game starts off just like the original, a crew consisting of Kendra Daniels, Zach Hammond, two nameless nobodies, and our boy Isaac Clark. They all sit aboard the USG Kellyan, intent on finding out what's going on with the planet-cracking ship, USG Ishimura. Even Nicole's opening message is copied verbatim. The broad strokes of the story are kept the same, but certain liberties were taken to alter dialogue, character motivations, and cutscenes, so they feel more natural with the other changes. We'll talk about these changes later on. You play as Isaac Clark, an engineer turned amateur surgeon who heads to the Ishimura to patch things up with his ex-girlfriend. So I smell pussy. I don't blame you. I'd listen to my girlfriend over him and reciting security protocols. Imagine listening to your so girlfriend, am I right, fellas? <laughs> it's meant to be a routine checkup, but... Looks like there's been a change of plans. And the Kellyan crash lands in the Ishimura hangar bay. I got a bad feeling about this. Boy, you always got a bad feeling about Captain, something. Oh. Oh. oh God. It's in the walls. It's in the walls. Unfortunately, we missed whatever cultist party happened here, and the ship is infested with horrifying monstrosities. The titular necromorphs. After getting ambushed and seeing two of his crewmates get eviscerated, Isaac makes a break for it, barely escaping with his life. Let's play Raid Shadow Legends. Start now. And at the end of this room, we stumble upon... Oh, reliable. Now, how has the gameplay and mechanics changed? Well, I'm not sure what impresses me more with the remake, 
the insane upgrades to the visual and sound departments, or the radical improvements to gameplay. You already know the drill. Don't aim for the head scrub. Shoot off the limbs. We're here to make quadriplegics, not friends. And there's a wide variety of weapons to do that with and an equally diverse array of enemies to dismember. Like the original, you can carry up to four at a time, but unlike the original, there's no useless weapons or dumb alternate fire modes that leave you perplexed. You don't have to use four weapons. In fact, it's still entirely possible to beat the game with just the plasma cutter, which is the only gun that's remained virtually unchanged, aside from an upgrade that adds knockback to Isaac's bitch slap. The good old pulse rifle. I always hated you. But it's gotten a grenade launcher now instead of whatever the hell this move was supposed to be. A massive waste of ammo, that's what. Fuck it, I don't want to aim in this game that's all about precision. Remember that weird trap the line gun had that never did anything because it took five whole fucking seconds to explode? That's gone. Replaced with these badass laser traps. You can stick them onto objects and even pick them up to create a mobile death zone of destruction. The flamethrower was god awful before, but with the new flesh peeling mechanics, it serves as a great support weapon to inflict damage over time and then use your other main weapons. It even comes packaged with a new flame wall ability, which will stop most necromorphs, but of course not the brute. Let's give him one of these. That did not stop him. That did not stop him. Oh, and the contact beam. Oh, the primary fire is a laser beam that obliterates anything in its way. Exodia would be proud. The old fire is a charge blast, which is so strong it can apparently one shot a brute on hard mode. Oh yeah? Hey, you didn't like that? That just one shot it. I wasted a second shot on this guy. My favorite has and always will be. Oh, 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 oh boy. Oh boy. The Ripper. Extremely ammo efficient and is so fun to slice and dice your enemies. The new alt fire is kind of underrated, but it launches blades that ricochet all over the place. The force gun is. It's nasty. This thing peels the flesh off the necromorphs, exposing their skeletons and bones. It flays them. And the gravity well alt fire is just a beauty to behold. Though there's only seven weapons, the sandbox feels larger than it is largely because of these new useful alt fires. But what makes the weapons in combat so much better than the original are the changes to how you upgrade. No longer are you forced to waste nodes on blank spaces to get to the next real upgrade. Thank God. In the old system, you didn't have much room to focus on more than two weapons and your suit. Motive also introduced a ton of schematic upgrades you can find and purchase, like a burning effect for the plasma cutter, more damage on the gravity well, additional ricochets for the ripper. Unlocking these are huge milestones for upgrading weapons, and it lets you get creative with the paths that you take. The schematics also come with a bonus power node, so you unlock things at a much more reasonable pace than you did before. I'm gonna sound like a sadist for saying this, but the new flesh peeling mechanic really highlights how satisfying the combat is. In the original, necromorph models wouldn't change until a limb was shot off completely, but here, their bodies take noticeable damage with every shot. You're shooting through skin, muscle, bone, and tendons. The only way is hacking them apart. Those arms, legs. Did that even kill them? Or do they just stop moving? Even after losing most of their limbs, the necromorphs will still crawl slowly and desperately try to murder you. Oh, look at him. He's limping. He's limping with murderous intent. So seeing how the necromorphs are affected by all this damage is really important. So you feel like that zombie child is really burning when you put it to the torch. Burn the children! God damn it! Isaac is a bit more nimble this time around. His melee attacks were very sluggish and borderline unusable in combat, and they've been retooled to be more effective. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little spooked after playing so much Dead Space. And aren't you tired of pissing yourself from playing it too? Do you need a more chill, laid-back game to enjoy? Well, too bad, soldier. You've been recruited to play War Thunder, the sponsor of today's video. War Thunder is one of the most in-depth vehicle combat games you will ever play. There are over 2,000 different vehicles to choose from, including helicopters, ships, tanks, planes, and more. Every vehicle is meticulously detailed and modeled to be as accurate as possible. Unlike COD Vanguard, War Thunder cares about 
realism. The catalog of vehicles spans over a hundred years from present day all the way back to the 1920s. And there's robust customization to boot. You can enjoy tons of different gameplay scenarios in PvP, mount up in your tank and battle across the plains, or take the fight to the skies. And you can play for free on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PS5, and last gen consoles. And if you download War Thunder today using my special link in the description and pinned comment, you'll get a ton of extra bonuses, including XP boosts, premium currency, and various other goodies. So what are you waiting for, soldier? Download and play War Thunder today and earn your stripes on the battlefield. Thank you, War Thunder, for sponsoring this video. Link in the description. And now for something completely different. So every change made to the weapons and sandbox was a good one. But how about the enemies? No, 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 no. Get the chicken wings out of here. God damn chicken wings. For the most part, all the baddies are the same. Regrettably, the pregnants no longer do that Humpty Dumpty run towards the player. Big sad. However, it's with the changes to enemies and difficulties that the remake starts to make some mistakes. In the 2008 version, Necromorphs felt a lot more threatening. They'd often do this manic sprint towards the player, swinging their limbs wildly. It gave off the impression that, okay, this is an organism with one single thought in its body. Kill. It wants to murder me until I'm dead. But in the remake, they rarely do this charge, and I can't recall a single time I ever saw it, if ever. It just seemed smarter in the original. And while these are small gripes in the grand scheme of things, the Necromorphs feel less like the galactic threat they used to be, and more like your run-of-the-mill zombies. The other complaint I have is with difficulty. Impossible used to be hard, but harder. And now, impossible is hard, but you only have one life and one save. I miss having an ultimate challenge that didn't revolve around, you fuck up once, restart the game, asshole. It's a real nice detail that slashers you encounter throughout the Ishimura have been altered to wear outfits that resemble which part of the ship you're in. I also like how they, they have all the different costumes, you know? Like these ones are in the mining uniforms. It adds realism to the game as you can imagine what these people were doing before they switched teams. The game is still hectic and fun as hell. Side note, I like that the goose-spitting necromorphs you saw like once or twice in the original are a lot more common now. And remember how the brutes would do this dumb like turtle move? Basically like, oh, okay, I'm tired. Go ahead and shoot me, I guess. That's gone and brute fights are a lot better because of it. The only changes to boss battles is with the Leviathan. Now that Isaac can Iron Man his way through zero G areas instead of floating like a brick, the fight plays out much differently, forcing you to fly around the tentacles instead of awkwardly floating away from them. And for the rematch, the developers looked at this turret section and said, well, that kind of sucked. Screw it. Go fight him out in space instead. So you do, and it's an awesome battle. Now my personal favorite enemy, the Divider. I needed to know the question, did they keep the same power? It's so iconic and spooky. It's like the sound my tummy makes when I'm hungry. You remember all those violent death animations? Oh yeah, they've returned and they look just as fantastic as they did. So the combat and enemies are awesome. But what about the atmosphere, the horror? Did they keep that intact? You think you really think you're gonna fool me with that? You really think? Mm-mm, mm-mm, I'm too smart. Aha! Sadly, I was completely unfazed from start to finish. This game didn't scare me once. Fuck, why is there a vent right there? Stop playing the music, please, so I can relax. No! What the fucking? You can suck my cock. All right, the game is still spooky as hell, and they rely on their old tricks while coming up with some new ones. Whoa! What? You fucking asshole, man! It just shows up, it just knocks the fucking vent down, and then just dips. He's just- he's stalking me. They're playing mind games, man. While overall slower, the Necromorphs have leveled up their sneak quite a bit. They don't often scream bloody murder right before an ambush unless you're fighting a bunch of them. Instead, there's a lot of encounters where they opt to distract you with one in front, 
while another stalks you from behind, you will be caught off guard, even if you're as familiar with the game as I am. And this is where the music and orchestra come into effect. Yeah, this entire aesthetic is just so fucking awesome. Oh god. Fuck. I'm not sure what it's called, like what the term for it is, but you know, when you turn a corner and then... Those music stings, man. It's like a music sting that plays when necromorphs come into view or burst through a vent. It almost mimics a slasher film, like you're the director of your own playthrough. Sound is really important in horror games, and while Dead Space has its fair share of jump scares, they're creative and feel earned. Good one, Dead Space developers, good one! Yeah! Yeah, that was awesome! Yeah! Fucking... you could... They had him come out of the fucking toilet. God damn it. The developers also made sure that while shopping, you'd get attacked at least once, which is a massive fuck you to the player because now I never feel safe. It goes a long way that they kept certain sound effects for things like picking up items and opening lockers. It tickles my nostalgia bone. And since we're talking about sound, let's discuss Isaac and his role in the gameplay. Now, making silent protagonists for your video game is a pretty safe bet. We've seen loads of successful examples in the past. It's a great way to make players feel more immersed in that character's shoes and by extension, the world. But it's interesting that Motive Studios chose to do the opposite with Isaac, when it would have been easier to keep him mute. But even if I was to ask, I suspect you're not the talkative type. However, they took this opportunity to not only remake his character, but his role in the gameplay and story. His reactions, breathing, and heartbeat have a huge impact on how the player feels. The devs call it the Alive System. We want Isaac to reflect how anyone would physically react in the scenario he's placed in, and vice versa, use that to influence the player to feel the same response. And it helps determine how tense a situation is meant to feel. For example, Isaac's breathing gets faster the longer he sprints, or he shouts in pain when he's hit. His breathing gets labored as he runs out of oxygen or is at low health. There's a lot of subtle improvements you likely won't notice unless you watch the Vidocs they made, which I highly recommend. Now, there's a current trend in third-person games where the protagonist is a chatterbox with a never-ending supply of Marvel-esque one-liners. It is so refreshing to see how they handled Isaac. He does comment on specific gameplay scenarios that occur, but it's uncommon, like if you stomp enemies too much. Fuck you! Ugh. Son of a bitch! Or Isaac will curse when he runs out of ammo. You fucking pile of shit. Motive Studios took Isaac and his dialogue to the next level. For Isaac's scripted dialogue lines, where the player maintains full control of Isaac, we will have three variations of each line to pick from based on his current state. A normal version, a fatigued version, and an injured version. So basically they had Gunner write record lines for the entire script of the game three times. One fatigued, one normal, one injured. You can't help him, Hammond. He's... You can't help him, Hammond. He's... And this is something many players likely won't ever pick up on. The improvements here make Dead Space an adrenaline-fueled nightmare, and I love every second of it. When I first booted up the remake, I thought, you know, this doesn't look that much better than the original. Not only did I feel like a fucking idiot when I looked at gameplay from the original, but it also served to remind me Dead Space in 2008 looked good. So how could they improve upon it? Don't tell me they screwed up the art style. Nay. Feast your eyes on this. The game is gorgeous, hands down. And I feel like it's so easy for a studio to misunderstand the thing they're remaking and trample over the original art style, replacing it with visuals in an atmosphere that betrays the tone. But this could not be further from the truth in the case of Dead Space. Not only is the fidelity and detail cranked up to 11, but the identity and style of the Ishimura is kept intact. In fact, it's much better. We see Bioshock type advertisements throughout. And Peng! Dude, they got ads for Peng now! Hey, there's always Peng. Don't forget that. Some parts of Dead Space felt like they used fog and darkness to obscure places that weren't as detailed or pretty, like the gondola ride early on. The remake keeps the same visual style, set pieces, and aesthetics while making it look better. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find a single pixel in this game that feels out of place. 
It's insane the amount of effort they put into this facet of the game. The presence of gravity, for example, changes how particles and effects behave in the world. Smoke interacts with all objects, including the player and necromorphs. This is the type of game you play and think to yourself, holy shit, they should make a movie of this. But how else has the Ishimura been transformed in the remake? What about the level design? Well, this is where we run into our first major unforgivable problem. There are all gender restrooms on this ship. You know, fellas, the only thing scarier than the necromorphs is the woke agenda in this video game. All gender restroom. <laughs> oh, dude, there were people, there were people that were upset about that. <laughs> there were people that were like, oh, Dead Space is woke now because of this. Bro, they probably have like 18 different genders in the future. Dead Space has a lot of iconic set pieces like the comms array, the exterior of the ship, a firing range, and they all look gorgeous. The hangar bay in the original is essentially one long path and nothing else. But now? Holy shit, you can fly around in here? Oh my god, this is exactly what I wanted to see going into this remake new areas that expand on what's already there. This infested area with the gondola right before you meet up with Nicole, it turns into a zero G environment that you can fly through and explore. Now let's talk about the tram system. What used to be a loading screen between each mission is now an integral part of traversing the Ishimura. Once you unlock the tram in one area, you can go there whenever you want. Loading screens don't exist. Hell, when you boot up the game and hit continue, it just zooms out from where you last saved. And what did we just do? Oh shit. Oh wow. That was fast. Remember always having to keep one power node on hand in case you found a security door? No longer. Instead, you unlock levels of clearance throughout the game. Remember this janky, unreadable 3D map screen? Yeah, I never used it either. But the new map is much more readable, which makes backtracking and finding those security areas far less cumbersome. Like the original, Dead Space Remake has an intensity director, and if you're familiar with Left 4 Dead, you know what I'm talking about. It creates random events that change the mood of the ship, add certain enemies, so when you are backtracking, you're not just walking through the park. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Ah! And I love this new approach of adding non-linearity to Dead Space. There's a lot of great secrets too, like if you stomp and swing at the ground in a certain order in this room, you'll unlock a secret text log. They also added a couple side quests. One of them fleshes out Isaac and Nicole's relationship more, showing her activities on the Ishimura before this all happened. Another side quest has you tracking down rigs of the crewmates and learning more about them and what happened on the ship. And the last side quest focuses on the backstory of the hunter and its creation. It's like, even when it comes to the story, they expanded on elements that the original should have. Certain sections have been revamped to be more interesting, like the engine room on the Valor. It still has a puzzle with pillars of flame to avoid, but it's different, a lot less janky. Similarly, the shooting range is still a shooting range, but um, your targets are a little different. Yep, you got me again, Motive Studios. Well done. What an elaborate set piece to create just to fake the player into thinking it's gonna be like the basketball mini game. A lot of old areas have seen the addition of these power switches, which do things like turn on lights, activate elevators, give life support, and most sections force you to choose to turn off one of these, which adds some player choice into areas that didn't have much before. Shooting asteroids in the original was clunky at best, but they took this opportunity to show you more of the ship and have you shoot down asteroids in a more dynamic way. In fact, a lot of the improvements in this remake are ideas ripped from Dead Space 2, like the controls in the Zero-G environments, Isaac being fully voiced, stomping corpses for items, a lack of loading screens. Dead Space still excels at environmental storytelling, and if you want to get the most out of playing this game, you'll want to stop and smell the corpses. That lady probably brought all these bodies in here and was just like holding out. Oh yeah, look, environmental storytelling. She killed these two, but they got her. Oh shit. Oh shit, dude. That's one of their hands. This is a game you you want to stop and smell the roses, man. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. Okay, Buster. Buster boy, do not use rigged door. <laughs> That's fucking funny. Do not use rigged door. There's a dead necromorph and then, you know, there's another one lurking behind.
Now, let's talk about the story and characters. Everyone's a bit different this time, though it's nice to see some of the OG voice actors return. Nicole has gotten a makeover to make her look older. Uh, this has been controversial to some, but you know, she looks more like a senior medical officer and less like some chick fresh out of college. No, they weren't trying to make Nicole ugly or whatever, shut up go away. Now, some folks had a problem with Isaac being fully voiced, and they also didn't like his face for some reason. Personally, I think he's pretty hot. I would probably date him, but I feel like he's got a ton of baggage and I don't want to deal with that, so a relationship is probably off the table. In Dead Space 2, Isaac regained his voice and it felt like a natural evolution of his character. His relationship with Nicole was fleshed out some more. Motive Studios clearly built off this premise in the remake, and scenes from Dead Space 2, like the opening phone call, were incorporated into the story. Thing is, if you prefer Isaac as a silent protagonist, you still have the original, and you always will. The big difference between the remake and the original is how dialogue is handled now, right? Before, it was all like, Let's get that computer display up, Isaac. Isaac, get the hell out of there! Isaac, you fix the tram, and I'll help you find Nicole. Isaac, get back to the Kelion and prep it for launch. Isaac, I'm sending the tram back to your location. Get to the medical deck and find that rig as fast as you can. Isaac, the air conditioning has stopped working. It's 92 degrees in my house. Go fix it. Isaac, go fix my broken marriage. Isaac, my toilet's clogged and overflowing again. Please help. But in the remake, Isaac is his own man. He has agency. And instead of having no say in how he and the crew should handle a situation, he bickers back and forth with Kendra and Hammond. What about manual targeting? You want to go out there with all that shit raining down and target the ADF cannons manually? If I give the cannons enough targeting data, it'll recalibrate the system. You got a better idea? Christ. It makes conversations a lot more interesting and natural. Instead of walking by a pool of blood in the beginning and saying nothing, Isaac makes a comment on it. There's something on the floor here. Seth? Isaac, I need that damage report. Now let's discuss the rest of Dead Space's cast a little further, and I'll say it right here. Overall, it's a downgrade. Don't get me wrong, the lore, the subplots, and side stories are much better, but the main plot isn't. Isaac and Nicole have a lot more chemistry than before. Chalice Mercer is a more involved villain. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, no, no. Oh. 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 Elizabeth Cross is a great addition, but Terrence Kine, Hammond, and Kendra are all far less compelling and interesting. I'm not sure if it's the writing, the voice acting, direction, or a combination of all three, but something's off. Terrence Kine is meant to be this unhinged doctor slash cultist who comes across as insane, but genuinely has good intentions and wants to help Isaac. It's just clear to us that he's been fucked up by the marker, so Kine was complex. In the remake, he's very one note and stale. I mean, just compare the voice acting. Escape on that shuttle and you'll kill us all. When they took the marker from Aegis 7, they woke the being in the core of the planet. The church, they think the marker is divine, but they don't know what's happened here, what's been released. Look, 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 look. The hell is that? Mercer calls up the hive mind. Nexus organism which controls these necromorphs telepathically. That is what we found in the core of the planet. Mercer calls it the hive mind. It's the source controlling the necromorphs telepathically. We were so stupid. Amelia, she knew. She told me it would return the beast to its slumber. But Amelia, she knew, she knew it could be stopped by returning the marker to the planet. The marker was containing it within the planet. Return the marker and seal the hive mind. Yeah, kind is a downgrade. Also, I felt the dynamic between Hammond and Kendra was much more interesting and real in the original. It felt like they were taking shit seriously and getting pissed off and frustrated with each other, which made sense given the circumstances, but now it feels like they're both clueless, lethargic. That artifact they found? Don't bullshit us. CEC knew all along about the marker, didn't they? Isn't that why you're really here? Corporate wouldn't send the Ishimura for some off the books mining, but alien technology, yeah. That bit. And how does losing my team fit into this theory? Hey, knock this shit off. When were you going to tell us about the artifact, Hammond? This marker? I don't know anything about that. It's referenced in the captain's records. They brought it up from the planet. It's on the ship? In cargo. They think it's of alien origin, but I don't know what the hell it is. Really? CEC didn't know anything about it? 
You're lying. Back up! I am not the bad guy here. We're all shaky right now. You're gonna have to trust that I don't know anything about it. <laughs> But the real tragedy is with Hammond. Fun fact, the guy who played Hammond is the same dude in 300 who got Sparta kicked and said, This is blasphemy. This is madness. It's the same guy. Just thought I'd blow your mind real quick. Kendra's supposed to be the sly secret agent who turns out to be the real villain. And to contrast that, she's meant to play the role of freaked out scaredy cat. Neither of these two seem as frightened by the necromorphs as they should be. What the fuck are these things? The ones I saw. Some of them were wearing Ishimura uniforms. They're the crew? How the hell can they be the crew? Look at them. We ran to more of them on the way over here. Are you okay? More what? What the hell are those things? Is that the crew? Keep your voice down. But what used to be intense fights between Kendra and Hammond now feel like mild disagreements. It betrays the intensity of the setting and how these characters should be acting. We need to get to the bridge. There's a thousand people on board. Someone will be there. We can't. The tram system's wrecked. Everything's locked down because of the quarantine. You're out of your league, Hammond. This is suicide. We're going the to die out here. Your lack of confidence in me is to be noted, Miss Daniels. But I have a mission to complete, and that's exactly what I am going to do, with or without you. Do we understand each other? Just get us out of here alive. And because Hammond so desperately wanted to get himself and his crew out alive in the original, it felt more tragic when he died. And then you had to fight the brute that killed him right after. I mean, that was a heartfelt moment. Instead, Hammond is relegated to chasing around a necromorph and then pushing it into a thingy. Now, I don't mind if remakes change the story, but the essence of the character should remain intact. And Hammond being brainwashed by the marker goes against the nature of his character as a resilient leader intent on surviving this epidemic. What did that thing do to you? Help me get him to the Kellys. Forget him, he's gone! That character, Chen, who got killed and turned in the beginning? Yeah, we don't know shit about him, but there's an implied history that Hammond has with Chen. But that history has no emotional weight with the audience because we don't experience it. But I just don't like the character of Hammond as much. In the end, he feels far less important to the overall story, and so does his sacrifice. I think the changes to the twist at the end was a really good choice. If they had kept it the same, you know, it would have been predictable for everyone. But, you know, like I said, they did things to catch veterans off guard. And it turns out Isaac has been hallucinating and picturing Nicole when it's really Elizabeth Cross, who has also been mistaking you for Jacob Temple. Which I think is really interesting that both of these characters had loved ones that died, but they projected their likeness onto a real person to give them a motivation. This also explains the physical manifestation of Nicole, which you had to speculate on before. Overall, the improvements to the story are appreciated. However, too many memorable characters had their best traits stripped away or made less important. If it weren't for this, I'd say there's almost no reason to play the original. But you can play it for a better story. In conclusion, the Dead Space remake is more than just a faithful adaption of the original. It's a major improvement in almost every single way. There's only a handful of things you can point to and say, this was done better in the original. The game is a technological marvel and Motive Studios went the extra mile in crafting its visuals, sound design, and combat. While changes to the difficulty settings and Necromorph AI hold the remake back slightly, there's not much else to complain about, honestly. For me and all the other horror fans out there, I hope the Dead Space remake does well. I hope it sends a message to EA and other developers in the industry that this type of game has a place. We deserve games like Dead Space. And uh, it appears EA has sent out some polls, gauging people's interest in future remakes. As far as I'm concerned, Dead Space is as good as a remake can get. They kept what was perfect, improved what wasn't, and didn't change what shouldn't have been changed. I can't ask for much more. And that is why the Dead Space remake is a masterpiece. But thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did and subscribe to The Axe Man for more awesome content. Don't forget to check out War Thunder. Use my link in the description and get a massive free bonus pack, including vehicles, boosters, and more. And a big shout out to all my awesome patrons. Thank you for your continued support. I will now answer your questions. Will you ever be doing a full Elden Ring review? Uh, I wanted to, but I had like 300 gigabytes of footage and I never finished organizing it. Why won't you answer my calls, BB? Forgive me, Johnny Rings. What is your favorite Ace Attorney game? Ooh, Trials and Tribulations and Spirit of Justice are oof. 
equal 10 out of 10s. When are you gonna talk about gears? It's almost 20 years old, man. Sometime this year. Yo, pretending male individual. How are you so damn good looking? Did you win the genetic lottery? I guess you could say that, but we're all our own worst critics when it comes to appearance. Have you considered doing an Attack on Titan review? I have. I've thought about it more than you know, but it would be such a massive series, I don't know if I could invest all that time and energy into it. Thank you, loyal patrons, for your questions. All right, everyone, that's all I got for today. This is The Act Man, signing out. Peace!